like our title says, we are going to be reacting to a video that was made about us recently. I apologize to any of you guys who were expecting a daily vlog. The people that enjoy following our lives day by day. Um, today is not a daily vlog. Today is just going to be this video. Uh, so we're just going to get right into it. Sam and I decided to make the video without the girls, even though they are fully aware of the video that was made about us. But because it was addressed to us, Sam and I decided that we make this video ourselves. So first of all, um, in the video, uh, she said that she tried to message us um several times and that we are not responding to her messages that's completely false time long ago when we first started her channel she did ask a question in the comments and i responded to her but she's never ever tried to contact us in any way shape or form since then before we get started i wanted to take a second to point out the fact that raleigh says that she is in vet school and we have a really close friend who's a vet in the states and i was talking to her last night when this video came out and she was explaining to me how one of the very first things that she learned in vet school, the VCPR. And if you don't know what that is, is the vet client patient relationship. And basically what they say in vet school is that you cannot diagnose any animal over a video, over a photo, over the phone. It's one of the reasons why when you call your vet and you send them videos and you send them photos, they say, well, I can't diagnose over the phone. So basically what they teach is that you cannot diagnose any animal without a relationship with the client and the animal without knowing their medical history. Sometimes a vet will give you information over the phone or through email if you send them a photo and it's because they already have a relationship with you and they're able to look back in their notes and see the horse's history and to be able to give an accurate diagnosis or an accurate opinion, they need those things. So when I was talking about it with my friend, she was absolutely, utterly appalled that anyone thinks that they can diagnose a horse without knowing the horse, without seeing the horse, without having a relationship with the horse and the owner. And that is because that's what they teach in med school. That's, it's almost even common sense. You cannot do that. So it does concern me in a huge way that someone would make a video about us that claims to be in vet school and not understand that client patient relationship status like any professional equine person that i know always says the same thing it's ingrained in them in 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 school that they cannot comment or even guess what could be wrong with another an with an animal without that relationship without that history to say you saw something on a video is just seems ludicrous to me so i wanted to get into the issue it was a video of sophie running thin the other day and P um and this girl claims that he was lame in the video and um what she described in the video were a few seconds where he took a misstep a couple of times he took a misstep our we saw it our trainer saw it we knew what was happening this is not a lameness issue this is a issue of finn being out of balance the reason he's struggling so much right now and has been for the last few months because sylvia is growing so much right now she is five foot four she is well within the range to ride a, a large pony she's well within the 15 percent uh body body weight ratio that she should have to ride Finn and she isn't well within the height. She is starting to outgrow him. But what the video did not tell you was that there are other things involved, not just weight and height. Some uh, ponies are super sensitive and Finn is super sensitive. And he notices that growth that Sophie's doing. He notices her height. He, um, when they ride, it's a constant struggle of both of them trying to balance each other. We're in a transitional stage and I've been telling you guys for months now that we are transitioning Sophie to uh, a horse is something that's a process like I keep telling you guys on our channel we are in the process of transitioning Sophie to a horse to make a video 
calling this some sort of animal abuse and making a big deal out of it and causing drama it seems so insane to me. Anyone trained in the equine industry, because we consult a lot of people in our day to day with our horses, would look at that video and see a girl that's ready to move onto a horse. That's all that it is. I think the thing that bothered me the most about the video is that Raleigh claims to have so much education and so much knowledge and yet she missed so many things. She um, claimed that our horse was lame and showed few little tiny clips of him taking a misstep which I explained is a balance thing. Horses that are trying to balance because their rider is starting to get too tall will do that. He definitely is not lame. We go to extreme lengths to make sure that he's in good shape. Three days before that video was taken of Sophie riding Finn, we had our monthly chiropractor appointment and she said the Finn was in great shape. She does all of everything, his neck. She's given us exercises to do with Finn. We do them all the time. She, we do neck stretches, we do leg stretches uh, to keep him supple. He had a little tiny bit of tightness in his lower back, which does often happen when kids are learning to frame a horse, especially if the horse is not pushing from behind correctly and she adjusted that and he adjusted really well. Another thing that we do to keep Finn feeling supple and healthy while we're compensating for our transitional period where Sylvie is growing and moving into a larger horse is that we have our trainer ride him and do trainer rides on him. So the day after that video was taken where Raleigh claims that Finn was so lame um, our trainer did ride him and he always sends me video every single time he rides him does a trainer ride on him Because he's always fighting with balance with Sophie who is starting to become too too tall for him um, Having our trainer ride him helps to keep him supple So I'm gonna post a little video of that right now of the last ride that our trainer had which is the day after we posted our video of Sophie's ride and hopefully you can tell that he has absolutely no lameness issues and he doesn't even brace very much because Brandon is experienced and knows how to balance himself and ride him. And normally when we have lameness issues and we notice that he's lame or our coach notices that he's lame, we always video our, we always video it and we actually do send it to our vet so he can check and a lot of times he can't see anything. He has to actually physically be there to actually see the horse move. He can't tell in the video. I mean, there are so many you reasons why a horse. The video. There are so many reasons why a horse would take an occasional misstep or two. Sometimes it's the footing, and sometimes when a horse starts to take missteps, our um, trainer will tell the maintenance guy in our barn to come and drag the arena. And just little things like that. There are so many things that can cause a, an occasional misstep. Finn, she claims that Finn was tripping so much. He does not, he's not a tripping pony. He very rarely trips. He's not big about tripping. And our trainer does a training ride on Finn. She, he says that he notices it a lot um, when he rides Finn, that when they start to go around corners sometimes, he gets ready for Sophie to go off balance and he'll brace his shoulders. He holds his shoulders tight, which is making his neck stay tight. And um, after a few times going around, he relaxes and becomes more supple because he understands that Brandon is not going to lose his balance. It is simply what children do while they're learning to ride. And all of you guys have been in this exact spot. You've been grow outgrowing a pony and moving into a horse, or you've been learning to ride and you haven't had great balance, or you haven't um, had a great control over your reins and steering. We have all gone through this process. I mean, not me, I'm not even close to even where Sophie is at, but this is, this is normal. Like it's normal to not be able to ride perfectly. Currently, Finn is riding in Gabby's saddle because he prefers it over Sophie's saddle and we want Finn to be happy. Sophie does have a saddle. Finn does not move as well in it, so we don't use it. Um, it is also a little tiny bit small for her, but because Finn is a large pony, we can't go bigger in a saddle to, um, to accommodate Sophie's Sophie's needs. So our priority is to make sure that the horse is comfortable in his saddle. We are trying other saddles. We are in the process of trying other saddles, but like, um, but again, it's a process and it takes time. Everything takes time. We're also in the process of trying to get Sophie's saddle fitted properly. 
Yeah, we're, we but have... She has, but we haven't had any luck with... Yeah, so we me. have contacted our saddle because you guys know we bought a custom saddle for Finn and it has changed, the saddle has changed shape. And she, so we've been trying to get a hold of the saddle maker, but he's in the States currently because of the, because of a big show or big something happening in the States. So I'm going to read to you guys what a uh, <laughs> brace is. A brace is resistance, whether it be in the horse's face, shoulders, neck, ribs... A horse has to be soft and relaxed in order for it to perform to the top of its level. Bracing can show up in anything from catching, leading, loading, and most often riding. A brace is tension that runs through the horse, which causes the horse to stiffen in its movement. Uh, when a horse braces, they get very stiff and will not give or respond to pressure from the rein, bit, leg, and so on. They can't move with flu. Um, they can't move fluidly, and you don't have the control that you need. Even a top athlete's face braces on a day-to-day -day basis it's something that's super common and we are working to do the best we can to to help Finn we are uh, like I said we are working on a saddle we have been working uh, Brandon gives him training rides to keep him supple um, we have a chiropractor that comes monthly we have a massage therapist that comes and all of this has really worked well in keeping Finn healthy. He is so healthy and out of all of our horses, he's always in the best shape. Also, like I've said in all of our videos for a long time now, we are in the process of moving Sophie from Finn up to a horse. Um, and we saw this happening way before she made that video. We saw this happening and we saw her growing and we saw her changing. And after the summer, we made so many changes. We made changes to take her to a lesson barn so that she would have the opportunity to ride other horses. She has been riding so many other horses. We made arrangements for her to stop riding her pony half the time so that she's riding a bigger horse. She rides her sister's horse who currently, or who just got finished having a tiny abscess and is just coming back into work. And she will again start riding him in half of her lesson. We did so many changes to facilitate the process of moving Sophie into a bigger horse and it's not so easy to just rip a child off a horse. Finn is doing great. Finn is doing amazing. He does have braces that we're working on training Sophie on balance and how to fix herself because Brandon is taller than Sophie but because he has much better balance Finn doesn't mind him and doesn't brace for him. We're working on Sophie to get her better and it is a process and that is what you do when you own a horse. You work through things. Braces can be changed with training and that is what we're slowly working towards. Yeah, we even changed the stirrups so she could we have better balance. the stirrups. Balancing. Like, we're trying so many things to help her work on her balance and get past this brace while we have our trainer working on Finn and while we have all these other supplementary um, therapies to help Finn keep comfortable. And it's all working. I spent this morning messaging back to a lot of young kids, a lot of young girls who say, oh no, Finn is lame, please stop riding him. And it saddens me to, the, to my very core that there is someone out there that claims to have knowledge and be in vet school and have experience that is sp spreading misinformation. It's so simple to say, that Sophie is growing out of Finn and that she needs to move to another horse. And that is what we've been working towards. We've been sharing that in every single video from months ago, from probably September. We've been sharing all these videos. Uh, we've been sharing all this information in videos. It saddens me that somebody would say awful things without doing their homework and going back through the videos to see what changes we've been making, to see things that we were doing. It seems so alarming to me that someone who claims to have so much knowledge and understanding is unable to tell if a horse is lame or if they're having balance issues and if a child is just simply growing out of her pony. Like, it's alarming to me that somebody with an audience would go out of their way to talk terrible and shed untruths about a situation that they are physically unable to verify and to understand because they're not a part of Finn's medical history or Finn's journey to just take a couple of snapshots out of a video and listen to some people who feel that they know better than us and make a video about it that influences so many young people that are sending me messages saying 
I'm so sorry to tell you this, but Finn is lame and they are so upset to think that Sophie, who is part of their heart and that they care for and that they love, is riding a lame horse purposefully because they were led to believe that. It, it hurts my heart so much. What bothers me is when a crackpot goes on YouTube and talks about somebody's horse and doesn't know anything and what also bothers me is all these young kids are getting on watching a video and believing in that person when they should you should be you should be using your own mind and not judging things on somebody one person's video so you should, i you should be you should be using your own mind and make your own opinions and not or follow message somebody us else's and opinions. ask us but i want to say that a friend of mine watches her videos and used to be a part of her Patreon account and loved her. And I think that you should love who you love. And my friend would like say, you know, she says this and she says this. And I just let her have her, her love with her. And she knows us so well, this friend. And watching that video and knowing us, my friend was utterly shocked and she said Laura I, I never knew that she lied so many times she said that she that Raleigh said in videos before that she was always fact checking and making sure that her information was accurate so my friend felt validated in believing everything that she said now watching that video and knowing us and knowing the things that we do for Finn and knowing all this uh, all of our stuff our medical stuff that we've shared with her um, she can't believe the fact that she still is making videos that are so untruthful and so negative. But I want to say that I do understand that we work in YouTube and we understand the politics of it. We understand how it works. And this video that she made had a promotional video in it, had a promotional element. And when you have a brand deal and you put it on YouTube, your job Part of your job is to make sure that the video gets the views that you need. And there are so many ways that people do this. You can um, use an engaging title that you know your viewers want to see, or you can um, make it about a product or, or something that's bigger. Like making a video about us ensures that she's gonna get the views she needs to make the brand deal happy. And so we understand that that's where most of that was coming from. She had a brand deal and she needed to make her video get the views that she needed. But, but I just feel really sad that someone as that claims to be as professional as they as she does would ever try and diagnose a horse in a video for views. It just seems to be so against what animal activists would do. It seems to be so against, it's definitely against our moral. You guys should also know that hate channels make their living off of bashing other channels. That's how they make their income. That's how she makes her income. Hate channels have to make hate videos to continue their channel to continue their income it's it's just a part of youtube unfortunately in this day and age social media works based on an algorithm that promotes videos that have a lot of traction have a lot of comments have a lot of likes and have a lot of views so for any influencer to move up in YouTube, you have to create videos that are going to get a lot of views and a lot of likes and a lot of comments. And unfortunately, some people choose to do that by hate and it works. Hate sells and it works. I just think that as a group, we need to start changing the world in a positive way, supporting people, changing people's perspective, ask questions and use a kind way to, and, to elicit change, not hate, and not ganging up on people and not saying awful things. In her video, Raleigh said that because we have an audience, we should not be putting out any um, improper information or showing any bad riding. And I just want to put out there that our channel is not about horses. Our channel is about our day-to-day -day life. Our channel is about being who we are inside. It's about making mistakes and growing and learning and developing the way God intends for us to, to. 
and I feel we do a really good job <laughs> showing all of our mistakes and all of our learning and all of our growing. I do not claim to know a lot about horses. We, as a family, strive to learn as much as we can, as fast as we can, and when we don't know an answer, then we contact a whole number of people that we have working together with us on our crew. We have vets, chiropractors, massage therapists, equine nutritionists we've even had contact with. I have a friend who's a vet. Like, we are always in contact. We are always working behind the scenes to keep our horses in their best shape. And it's obvious, our, so many people who come into our lives because of our horses comment on how much we do for our horses. A lot of stuff we keep behind the scenes. We don't talk about our children's um, health. We don't talk about a lot of things that we encounter with our horses. A lot of things are private just for us and we don't put everything out there on social media and this is one of the reasons why sometimes it just gets crazy and that is our right to privacy we share the things that we feel comfortable sharing and if you have a problem or a question then you can always message me and that is another thing I wanted to talk about is that I get people messaging me every single day that have a question or have a concern and then I explain things to them because I feel that they're very sincere and they genuinely want to understand and help but people who go out of their way to make a video for a brand deal to get views that they need um, for a brand deal that is not I can't take that seriously that is having an ulterior agenda in my opinion if she really did truly have concerns for our horses um, she could have messaged us she could have asked us questions I would gladly have talked to her I talked to anybody who messages me I think it's really important for us to understand if a vet will not give you a diagnosis over a phone or an email or a video unless they know your horse's medical history or they have a relationship with you and your horse then I think it's important that we realize that it can't be done by someone else and I just want to tell you this little quick story in closing uh, when we first started our channel I met this woman and she was this amazing equine rehabilitator and she really rehabilitated horses that were like Olympic horses, like big name brand horses, big name horses. She rehabilitated them and she had like a really natural way about her and she was incredible and she taught me so much. And I still love this lady to this day. But one day she sent me a message and said, Storm was, um, I forget what she said he was doing. He was moving kind of funny. He has his own way of moving. And she said he was doing something. It's when all their muscles get really tight after a really hard workout. Gabby was only 11 at the time. She wasn't really working him out very hard, but she felt he had this. And I tried so much trust in her and so much belief in her that when she said, call your vet now and demand a blood test for this, you can test for it. I did it. I ran to the vet. I told my trainer like, oh my gosh, Storm has this. She said, no, Laura, he doesn't have this. I said, yes, she is experienced. She knows this. And I went against my, my trainer and I went to the vet and the vet came and said, I don't think he has this. And I said, no, he has it. I know he has it because this woman is so experienced and so educated. And I made him do the blood test and the blood test came back and Storm did not have that. He did not have that issue at all. And so when I told the lady, like the vet said he doesn't have it, she said, demand a second opinion. I know he has this. And even though I really love this lady and I still appreciate her to this day, I had to stand back and recognize that you cannot diagnose something from a video without the knowledge from the horse's history or a relationship with the horse and the patient because you can't see so many things and in a video things get distorted and that was the very first time you guys that I realized that you can't diagnose from a video and it's unfortunate and it just can't be done and anyone who claims to be a vet student and tries to do that makes me really worried about what their diagnosis is going to be. I also do want to say that we get so many comments and advice and suggestions from people. So many people reach out to us and I have spent hours upon hours upon hours learning from you guys and and getting information from you and making changes to our horses which I which is I think one of the reasons why we're able to care for our horse so, horses so well because you guys give us such amazing advice and I also wanted to point out that people get really upset when they're blocked from our channel and it's not because we are reading their comments and saying oh, 
how dare you we have moderators that work on our channel and that moderate everything for us and and we've given them instructions that they don't need to delete comments that are people with different opinions i believe in inclusivity and kindness and i want people to feel at our channel like they do have a say and that they can have a difference of opinion and i've always felt like that it's only people who say things in an aggressive manner or, or try to say awful things body shaming um uh, any kind of shaming actually um, and those are the people that get blocked and get deleted so I wanted to also tell you guys that do you have any final words don't listen to crackpots what is a crackpot <laughs> anybody who has a say that's not true anybody who thinks that they can have a say into somebody else's life based I mean, on you a video could have a say but don't base your opinion on a video you saw that somebody says that oh he's lame so now he's lame. Everybody believes he's lame. Do you see if he's lame? Do you well, recognize she, the lame? He lameness? did take a couple of off steps, and that's another thing. When I was talking to my friend okay, who but is the a vet. The point is, the point is, you got people watching a video where one person says he's lame, but if you can't determine on your own that that thing that that horse is lame. Why do you... Why are you believing what somebody else believing says? Believing somebody because else. Because that's what I have a problem with. When people that's say the that problem. they are a vet in training and that they're educated and that this is what they're seeing, that's where I have the problem. You should not... If you have Here's the, the knowledge, then you will be able to tell that Sophie is just outgrowing her horse. And if you're going to make a video about her outgrowing her horse, then that's okay. But make sure that you know... Um, if we are taking steps to put her into a bigger horse. Here's the problem. She's got a hate <laughs> channel. She's yeah, a hate channel. I'm it saying it. Channel. She's a hate channel. Yeah, it's she true. She posts hate on everybody and everything. Because that's her job. And where does she get the info from? Haters. Her subscribers <laughs> say, oh my gosh, look at this. Finn is lame, let's say, for an example. Finn is lame. Finn is lame. You get enough 10, 20 people to say that. Because they're reading the same comments. All, all the little girls saying. that sent me messages could not tell if Finn was lame or not. But you got you get ten or twenty they subscribers just saying because she says that she's educated. Okay, but, but you get ten or twenty people saying, "Watch your channel. Finn looks lame. Finn looks lame. Finn looks lame." Oh my God! Yeah, he's lame. But it's true that he did take a few lame steps, and Brandon and I were watching. And in one point of our video, I'm like, "Wait." Was he lame right there? And Brandon said, wait, I'm just watching. And then we realized that he was fine. He was just trying to rebalance. And I think that happens in everybody's lessons. Like anytime a horse comes in and a kid is riding, we're always watching. Trainers are always watching while they go around. But she took a very small part of our video, a couple of missteps and said that he was lame. And it is not a lameness issue, it is a balance issue. We have consulted so many professionals in the last 24 hours and trying to figure this out and not one of them was our coach. We went to vets, we went to higher level professional people that, that know us and know our horse's history. My other point is, stop being hateful. Stop being hateful on the channel, on anybody's channel. It's yeah. terrible. But that's a process too. Just like we can't expect you to understand everything that we do and every choice that we make. We can't expect you to understand what's kind and what's not. Everybody has their own experiences and people are grown up. People are raised in a shaming environment and they don't know any other way but to shame. People learn, only know, you can only do what you know, guys. And so I understand when it's a process, growing and learning and changing as a process. And I just want you guys to know that we love you and it's okay to not understand everything and it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to be outgrowing your pony and we can't just rip her off her pony it's a process Finn loves her and has a bond with her like no other and she has a bond with him and it's happening and we are transitioning her and you will see and you should know that when we did this with gabby it was months of transitioning before she got another horse before she got gino when i used to tell gabby that she had to get another horse she would cover her ears and cry and refuse to even talk about it it is a process it, feelings matter emotions matter love matters and matters to us as parents and so we are going to take the time to transition Sophie properly 
so that everybody is happy and nobody is broken hearted at the end of this transition. But anyway, that is it. That's all we have to say because I'm going to have to block out a lot of the things that Sam said. Spread love, not hate. <laughs> Spread love, not hate. And don't try and diagnose an animal injury by video. Get the full picture. Talk to the people, at least in the very least, talk to the people, get the information, or go back and watch the videos and get the information. It's all there. All the changes we've made, all the talking about all the changes we've made, all the times I've said Sophie is moving into transitioning into a bigger horse, and that's why she's riding other horses. We've all done it, you guys. We've all outgrown ponies in one way or another outgrown horses in one way or another and it is just the way that it happens it's just like you guys anyway I thank you guys for watching if you have any questions of course uh, comment them below please try and be kind so that our moderators don't have to work overtime <laughs> but we love you and um, I hope that you guys will stick around and get to see Sophie's new horse when it finally appears in her life Bye. Bye. Don't you know that you're beautiful?